Well, hello my friends. Alfred Taro here, the Rebel Turner. And I am back. You know, uh, I'm gonna start this one off by saying, I don't think this much worse. Actually, I'm gonna back that up. There is one thing that's worse than finding a piece of wood, getting home, all excited, you throw it in onto the lathe, and the piece cracks and checks all over the place on you, such as this one. So what I wanna say about that is that just because a piece checks up like that does not mean that you should go and throw away all that wood and discard it and not do anything else with it. In my case, you know, that's probably never the case. But anyway, I want to show you that the problem with when you get checking like that is not necessarily due to the piece of wood in itself or the species. Sometimes it has more to do with the orientation of how you mount it on. And I also said that I was going to maybe do a little tour of the place of my house with some of my turnings that I have done and I just display them throughout the place. Not necessarily that they're great or not great or whatever. But the point is that seeing that I don't focus or don't put any energy on trying to sell some of my woodwork, I am stuck with a lot of pieces that well, it's just a lot of pieces <laughs> that really don't have a place, uh, you know, for them. So, but first of all, back to the su subject. Let me see if I can stabilize this camera over here. All right, I'll hold it in hand. Not my way of doing things. But anyway, the reason why I say that, not to discard a piece of wood just because one checks up on you, as you can see. As you can see, here are two pieces of wood from the same log. You have this one, that's checked as I showed. And I have this one from the same lock that has no checking whatsoever. It's exactly the same way of when I turned it. And this is that Royal Palm Point C Anna, I believe. Oh, I keep some shells on the bottom of it while it's uh, still wet so it doesn't create um, moisture between the base which it will. So therefore it gives it a little bit of room to breathe when I display it. So there you go. I'm actually excited to get back into the sh uh, shed and to turn another one like this. Not like it, but in the same orientation. This is end grain, checked like crazy. This is side grain and it is beautiful. And actually I mentioned on the video how I wasn't too keen on the black but really the wood has created some amazing, amazing coloration that I'm really happy with it. Where end grain, it did not do anything. It just stood the way I turned it. Now, going through the house slightly, and I'm not gonna focus much on it. I'm gonna show you that I do have lots of woods turning. And the majority of these pieces are there is a video on them i apologize i don't remember the names but i know that some of you that have gone through my wood turning channels see and have seen some of the actual videos on doing this turning and they are very much the same way that i turn and the majority 90 percent of them were turned green some of these pieces are maybe three years old, two, three years old, and some of them are fairly newer. 
So anyway, vases I keep them up high. There. There on the top of this bookshelf. And uh, I keep a couple of pieces up there as well. That is my some of my first up there. Those two, my first uh, segmented turnings. Walking to my desk, I have this star piece that's been here for a long time, but it's segmented. Sorry about the lighting here, it's horrible. I can't get this to light up enough. So these are some turnings. This piece was turned oh, four years ago. Extremely light, very uh, punky. Um, and it's exactly the same way that I turned it, very light. And you can see that the finish, now I have not touched, dusted, polished, done anything with these pieces. The way you see them is the reflection that you see on them all the time. Um, and what if it was a polish finish uh, a friction polish or whatever that's the state that they're in this vase done it was 2019 but probably uh, uh, six months ago it created a little bit of a check but it actually had some checking when I did the turning you can see that on the uh, the video and everything is intact the epoxy has stood the bar uh, bark has not separated I don't have any checking on the bottom so it shows you that it's okay to turn green. You might, you know, it might wobble a little bit. Uh, you know, this one has a slight bit of a wobble, but it stands, it's not really a critical uh, wobble. The uh, sphere and the cube, done that not too long ago, uh, but you know, Nothing has cracked or checked. Vase in the cube, an interesting turning. And I have it here, not because it's great, but because it's definitely a one of a kind piece. I don't think anybody has done anything like that. And I get crazy ideas at times, and that's all it is. So I do have turnings throughout the place. This piece right here is, was my first uh, mushroom bowl, which started the whole trend on what my style of turning in a way. Spalted, uh, ficus. And I should have known it was ficus because the way it grows with the, the, all these indents. This piece down at the bottom, sea grape, done quite a while ago. Let me get you to better lighting. Sea grape, the shine is still amazing. And uh, the checking has opened up slightly more than what it was when I first turned it. And that's what makes this piece. It really is. So I don't worry about things like that. It adds character to the piece in my opinion. So I have another little vase here that uh, I don't know when I did that. Um, was done quite some time ago. Don't remember the word, but everything is intact. Everything that was on the piece when it was first turned, that's the way it is. Piece of gum that was turned quite a while back, still in one piece. Well, my goblet, my goblet has decided to do something slightly different. And uh, the goblet, well, guess what? I couldn't turn it like that if I tried. Still a nice finish on it. The stem really bent 
around this little knot that it had here, which was kind of expected. My rings are still intact. So, it is what it is. I mean, you know, you guys, if you worry too much about the piece uh, doing that, then I don't know what to tell you. Other than, don't be afraid to turn green. This piece of cherry, wild cherry, done. It wasn't done that long ago, but the way it was when I turned it, both on the finish and nothing else has checked on it, it had all this checking. Going through it, the time that I turned it, and that's the way it is. Beautiful, beautiful piece. So some of the bigger pieces, this was done fairly recent. It was the 2,000 year old Sequoia that came from California. Not a great finish on it, it, was, it never was from the, from the beginning, but a, an interesting piece. Uh, nonetheless, so some early done oak pieces very early done with just some decorative seashells i don't remember when i did this but all in one piece in the bathroom an old uh, red cedar aromic cedar donut bowl wife keeps q-tips on them uh, just the way it is the oak box done out of uh, a pallet pallet wood beautiful piece a little checking up on the top on the lid but I think it was there as well and uh, still looks perfect and like I said you know, we have things staggered out. The dice, another beautiful vase over here. And again, I apologize for the lighting, but uh, it was done very green and it's still in one piece, no checking, nothing of that sort. Goodness, the lighting is killing me. That was done not too long ago. And the bulging vase from a cube. Still nothing. Nothing going on with it. I hope I can show you this. Uh, well, this piece might be a little interesting uh, I don't know if I did a video on this but this was done uh, three four years ago 2015 so again perfect perfect piece without any checking and still a really really respectable finish had a little uh, a little imperfection here so I turned it or oh, I ground it down into a tree and filled it up with epoxy. Still in perfect shape. that I did not too long ago but long enough perfect condition nice fit nice finish another one of those uh, the bird's mouth vase that I did with some dry flowers beautiful piece beautiful markings again finish has not changed any an old piece old piece that I did with a little engraving in there as well now this part right here kind of distorted a little bit where the tree and that uh, 
uh, not was. So, guess what? It's the perfect thing to create the uh, the trunk of the tree. So, how else would I want to change that? Or why would I want to change that? It's like the oblong, you can see from the base, but that was turned green and still a good, good friction finish on this. Turned green, carrot wood, beautiful, beautiful wood. I was so excited when I found this wood and uh, it had a big check here when I turned it. So therefore, I did the lace. It's not per se original. Now this one has distorted a little bit more than some. The base is not 100% true. You can see that it cupped up in the middle where that check was going through. But perfect piece that does not bother me. And still perfect finish from three years ago. Three years ago. And that's what the differences become after some time. Yes, I don't know if you've seen this one, but uh, this one was done a couple of months ago. The checking that was already here opened up a little bit more. Beautiful, beautiful piece still a very respectable finish and uh, I think this one done was done maybe four or five months ago I mean look at this nothing has changed this was done at the end of last year it was always a silky finish on it when I turned it and it's still a silky finish on it today for a satin finish should I say <clears throat> got an oak nope um, that is uh, a burl I did a couple of them from that piece uh, that a good friend of mine's brought down to me he brought me a couple of good sized burls mixed now this piece the color uh, has changed dramatically from the time that I turned it to what it is right now. Shape has maintained exactly the same except for this check right here. And this is sycamore. And sycamore has a tendency to crack like that when you do end grain turning. If this was done on a different orientation, there would be no issues at all with that. Well, segmented pieces, well, you know, they're segmented. They will stay the way you make them if the wood was dry. <coughs> the uh, spiral, st spiral stem goblet. I guess that's what I can call this. This was uh, done right after the Hurricane Irma, which was last year. And... Uh, Beautiful, beautiful condition, bark in place, and this was green as it could be uh, during the turning. The, sh the bark always shrinks a huge amount, or should I say the sap right around the bark. As soon as you turn it, it starts shrinking like crazy, but all in one piece. On this particular case, I treated that up with uh, CA glue. One of my uh, droop over bowls, you know, I try to offset them. So it becomes long on one side than the other, rather than making it too perfect. And again, still kind of a, an interesting finish. This is the uh, Fire Red Mezzanini. Very green when I got it. Interesting turning. It was fire red. But since then, as it dries up, it becomes a leathery look. 
it doubled up. It's in the same shape. The, the openings might have uh, opened up a little bit, but it was part of the character that it had when I initially turned it anyway, other than this. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like the leather on the bottom. So, as you can see, I have my woodwork pieces staggered out throughout the house. And some of these pieces, like I said, this one is uh, fairly new. Uh, this was part of that gift that uh, I received from a fan in California. And that was the uh, Redwood um, Burl. This is an old oak piece, still in perfect condition. Still pretty much the way that I turned it. Another old oak. This thing's got to be four years old. This was one of my early turnings, an idea that came up to make a top looking uh, vase. So it actually spins. Uh, well, that was the idea. Uh, so even little pieces that were done that were fairly green or dry pieces, it doesn't matter what they were. Yes, and I do keep my wood turnings throughout. This piece, that piece right there, that was rescued actually from a fire uh, pile. The, this guy that cuts down woods had this all split up into logs for firewood. And I passed by and it's like, oh my God, I gotta get a couple of these. So I picked that up. And what's interesting, on, because it was very wet, is how it dried up and became all scallopy looking or shell pearl uh, look. Of course, the finish on that was, I believe, a lacquer because you can't polish something square. But love the piece. The piece is exactly, exactly the way that I turned it. The check or that bark inclusion did not get any bigger, did not open up, did not split, did not lose its trueness. And same thing with this one from the same wood. Again, I got that because of that check that was there that intrigued me. Uh, and those are the things that intrigued me. This piece right here was probably one of the first wood turnings that I did. Uh, spalted oak. Uh, 2016. I started turning late in 2015, I believe. And uh, this piece, this was uh, grub holes, grub worms, uh, going through here, even all of this. This piece, I lost a little bridging that was here, a little connection between here and here. And I lost that not due to shrinkage or the age of the piece, was because I dropped it or I... Oh, I don't remember I handled it wrong um, and it snapped off and I didn't bother putting it back since it would look like a fix and this way still looks natural so here it is 2016 oak now the finish I've never touched this up it is the way that I first turned it it's still somewhat of a, a satin finish it's not high gloss, it's far from being a high gloss. But then again, I don't go for the high gloss look. I'd rather see something that looks very natural than something super shiny in most cases. Most cases. Yes, I had my share of painting as well. So the, I do have a couple of paintings staggered out throughout the place. I know, now I'm bragging. But anyway, uh, Again, that's the tour of the wood turning. That is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to put a, a type of piece that did not behave the way you wanted it to back on the lathe. Do not discard it because here's a perfect example of all the checking, rough, could not sand it to a piece that is perfectly, perfectly smooth on the same species 
same log, same tree. It was a log that was three foot long, more or less, uh, four, uh, 30 inches long, and I cut it up into about uh, a 12 inch, maybe uh, 10, 12 inches uh, tall for this. And then I had another piece that was left over and I split it up in half and I got this one up and I got another one in the shed that is definitely going to create something different but in that orientation so I don't get that that checking just because one piece checks does not mean they're all going to check never give up I say that quite a bit but we, as artists, if we want to consider, or if anybody wants to consider as artists, should never give up our goals and what we want to achieve. We achieve what we can, and what we don't achieve, we learn from, and we modify, we go in a different direction, or we decide, is it worthy to try? Because that's all we should do, is at least try. If we don't try, then we fail before we even know if, if we have an option. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, which will be the repair, another repair of that piece. Thank you. See you again.